that, as far as I can determine, is bad mental health, <laughs> aided and abetted by religious fanaticism. There you go. We've got it here in the United States to a horrible degree, and then you've got the same thing in the Middle East. All that trouble in the Middle East is based on different people saying, my religion is entirely too correct, and your religion is nowhere. And because your religion is nowhere, I'm going to kill you. You're an atheist, right, Frank? No, I wouldn't say that at all. But I'll tell you one thing. I, I do not belong to anybody's organized religion because I would not support the the various horrible activities that are carried on by these religions. I mean, in the United States, we we're given the impression that because a Christian organization sends some uh, powdered milk to uh, somebody in another country, that they're doing good works, okay? But what they're really doing is they're sending the powdered milk over there, and then they're sending somebody there to brainwash that person into buying their brand of religion. They're converting that person to Christianity, okay? Mm -hmm. And once you've been converted to Christianity, you have to believe that Christianity is where it's at. And if you don't believe that, then you're not a good Christian. So what are your logical options? If somebody has another religion, you have to hate them. And ultimately, it just breeds hate, and then the next thing you know, you got wars. Mm -hmm. Look back through history. A lot of the times when trouble got started, the church under one disguise or another was right in there stirring up the trouble <laughs> and that's the thing that really bothers me about the way in which uh, video evangelism has proliferated in the united states a lot of people who just want some peace of mind fall for this stuff wind up supporting it with their hard-earned dollars and then wind up being taken in by these guys who are using that video power to do bad things and if somebody catches them doing those bad things, let's say a government investigation, and they find out, and it's in the news, that these people have been cheating, they've been pocketing their, you know, their own funds and buying cars and expensive houses, then they go on television and tell everybody that it's the devil at work, it's their enemies, it's something, uh, it's something that the Bible says is going to happen, we need, we expect this, we welcome this, this is the challenge, and they twist it around, it's so aggravating. Uh, I saw Pat Boone on one of those shows the other day. I mean, just being really nauseating. I think it was the, the <laughs> 700 Club, one of those things. Jim yeah. Baker. God, what brainwashing they had going on. They were doing this weird attack on Norman Lear. and oh, I monitor the activities of these uh, groups periodically just to see how far-fetched it's getting. I watched one channel the other day that had a robot reciting the Bible. Oh, for the kids, of course. Right. It was on, the, it was on um, a Bible quiz show for, for children, and they had a robot reciting the Bible. And then <clears throat> there's another channel here in California that comes from Orange County that has a guy called Pastor Gary. Oh, I, I yeah, he was on this program. On the program? Yeah. God, I remember. He was on this program. Go ahead, Frank. Oh, my God. Have you ever seen his show? Yes. Yes, and I don't believe, I mean, it was amazing. I couldn't believe what I saw. And after about three times, I said, I got to get a hold of this guy. And he, he reluctantly gave in to do the program. He didn't want to at first, but uh, he had a, you know, we had a good show with him. But the thing is, he didn't mention Frank Zappa, which is a surprise. And he didn't mention you as far as devil worshiping or any evil intentions. He mentioned just about every other band. Yeah, well, the thing is, well, I don't know whether to be thankful or not that he didn't mention me, but <laughs> the thing is that what he's doing is a scam. And what most of those guys are doing is a total scam. It's like Brain a bunko, you know? I wonder, Frank, how much they realize sometimes that it is a scam, or are they so brainwashed themselves, they're so caught up in it, they don't know themselves. Well, there's no way, because, I mean, look at that show. Look at the production values in that show. He's standing in front of giant photo blow-ups of album covers of heavy metal groups. <laughs> A dry ice smoke on the floor. Yeah. He's got a pulpit in the middle of that. He's got blue spotlights, and he plays records that you wouldn't even hear on the radio. Really? And then he plays them backwards, and he tells you that the devil's going to get you, and then he wants you to send him $10 for a cassette. Now, what kind of sincerity is that? Mm -hmm. How many times, how many yeah, send in money. can you do this? That's all he wants, send money. And the sad thing about it is it's very effective. Uh, he said the Blue Oyster Cult song, Don't Fear the Reaper, is about encouraging children to commit suicide. He believes that. 
He doesn't believe that. Come on. Well, this is his. This <laughs> he is claims he believes. He claims he does. Yeah, and it was just, uh, you know, it's, but he's mellowed out. Occasionally, I will, in the middle of the night, try to catch that show, because it's usually on in the middle of the night, and you know, fooling around with cable. And lately, he's just not talking about rock and roll, so maybe he got a, he had enough of it or something. But let me, let's talk about Jerry Falwell. <laughs> Since we're on the subject, let's, why hey, not? That man is really insincere. The camera does not lie. That guy is... He is fake. <laughs> Tell him Brian is fake. This is so true. And he and Ronald Reagan make a perfect team. I love the way you said you still say Reagan. Reagan Reaganomics. Yeah. Oh well, right, okay. Enough of that. Uh, Enough of that. Baltimore, but I mean, they deserve each other. <sighs> okay. Let's. Uh, any more questions for this call? I will move yeah, on. Yeah, I got just a couple. You know. Uh, Real quick. Okay. Uh, your guitarist for your band. He's, I can't remember his name, Steve you know, right off the bat, but he's so talented to me. He, he reminds me a lot of Michael Bruce from the old Alice Cooper band. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, he, he does remind me of Michael Bruce. And in Michael's opinion, I don't know what that, what that does to him, but whether he's still around or not, that's not important. But, you, you know, he does remind me of that. And uh, One more. You're, I wanted to tell you about a guy here in Raleigh that he's got a pick, old beat-up pickup truck and he drives around town and on the side of it is painted Montana Dental Floss Farms. <laughs> Can you believe this? <laughs> he's dedicated, man, from way back. Yeah. He's, uh, he's got it and I see him every day. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing. If that guy tries to sell you any dental floss, give him Pastor Gary's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> or Paul will. I got his number. I got his <laughs> number. Just tell him to call me. Hey, hey, man, it's been really great. Uh... Tell your kids, Dweezil and everybody, that everybody in North Carolina it does respect them. No matter how much we do not get the radio play, there's a lot of people that do know about Dweezil and Moon because of her, you know, her talents. Yeah, and uh, tell Dweezil anytime he's in Raleigh, Wicked Elder would love for him to sit in and jam with him. <clears throat> okay, well, I'll tell you one thing. If he ever did jam with you, your eyebrows would be up around the ceiling someplace because he's a monster. Is he really? He is a monster. I'm We'd love to have him. I mean, we're, we're, we're trying right. to get as wicked as we can. And, uh, you know, in their 20s and 30s that have been playing for years and hear him play. Oh, oh, oh it was really, it was really great. And George Sturr good to call in. I mean, I thought that was really neat. <laughs> Neat. It was, it was great to hear from Thurgood. Listen to him compliment you, Frank. And uh, that's all I really had to say. I just wanted to talk to you and tell you hello. All right. Thank you very much for your call. Before we go back to the phone, thanks a lot for calling in, man. Yeah. Crunchy Water from Dweezil Zappa. Actually, he did that when he was 12. 12 years old. Now, he, I'm sure you have uh, more than just one or two recordings. You probably have on tape a lot of Dweezil. He probably makes his own tapes. Well, he does. He makes a lot of tapes with a little cassette machine, but as far as master quality tapes, there aren't that many. Do you let him use your equipment? We're in the studio? Yeah. yeah well, he started, as I said, he started to make an album in there. And Crunchy Water was recorded in the studio. Okay. Hi, Janice. Hello, Frank. How you doing? Well, I'm really surprised I can talk to you. Well, why not? Well, I lived in California for a long time and went to many of your concerts and never got a chance to speak to you. Well, see, science solved all that. The satellites and the long cables and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, my uh, daughter's followed your daughter's um, development for a long time. And uh, when uh, the, they had the, con uh, the competition of the uh, Valley Girls, yeah. she was really impressed. You mean out at the Galleria? Pardon? In the competition at the Galleria? The, uh, the Valley Girls. Yeah, they had it. They held it at a place in the Valley called the Galleria. Yeah, I think it was. It was reported on all the networks. Uh, Entertainment Tonight did a report on it. Yeah, well, she it kind of changed her life because when we lived in California, she followed a lot of the uh, young teenage um, movie stars and actors, and it's really changed her life. Well, how? Well, we used to live in California, and we've moved to North Carolina, and they don't seem to teach the children in school the uh, competition, um, self-development, and she really misses being in California because of that. Yeah. And well, I, I was never that fond of California schools. I don't know if it, 
if, if you don't find the schools in North Carolina to, to uh, be any better than the California schools, you must really be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Well, we get the impression around here that when you talk about New York and especially on the suburbs of New York City and California, we're talking about superior educational systems because of the money that's there and the uh, with all the population, dense population. We would think by now California would be way ahead of us. I'm just basing this comment on uh, what I see them teaching my kids in school, and it's not that good. Well, I, I know from uh, my daughter being in uh, freshman high school, uh, I looked a little bit at the curriculum and talked to a lot of teenagers around here about what they're learning in school, and they're not really learning um, how to think, how to uh, develop ideas and and get from their dream to the reality of what they want. Yeah, well, I think that's what uh, education is really supposed to do for you, but American education has never been geared toward uh, developing logical concepts in the classroom. American education is geared very much towards parrot-type learning. You will pass if you memorize this crap. And that's, if you write it, it down on the test, then you are a good student. And when you get a diploma, all that tells you is you are a parrot. And in order to develop the ability to think logically about what's going on around you, first of all, you have to have a desire to do it. And second of all, you have to tend to ignore some of the things that they try and jam down your throat in school. And this is what I tell my kids because the, the type of brainwashing that goes on in the schools is a, is a byproduct of the education business. The education business is not just uh, the teacher industry, but think about where those textbooks come from. All the textbooks that are in school, that's a big industry. People compete in order to make those huge sales of volumes of textbooks to entire school systems. And what's in those textbooks is totally censored. And it's totally slanted to support a certain economic and political viewpoint that the school board adopts. They'll only buy those textbooks which uh, will tend to support those social theories that are operational in that particular neighborhood. So if you're living in a Bible Belt community, there's a very good chance that the textbooks that are in the school do not provide your kids with the total story about what they need to know. And you should be thankful that there still are such things as free public libraries in the United States where you can go in and get other books to supplement the information that they hand you in school because they're not allowing you to play with a full deck. What's your friend? One one thing more. When you were in school, Frank, you had troubles with the teachers, and you had. Uh... Thrown out all the time, but I went to the library. Even I mean, even in the 1950s, when I was in school, they still had libraries. You know, you could still go in and get books. Uh, that's the difference. Then you did study. Well, there's a lot to be learned in the library, but I wish the te the schools would teach uh, more of um, how to deal with the world. Uh, for instance, um, I've taken a real estate course lately, and I learned a lot by going through the Register of Deeds in the county clerk's office. I, I have a, a knowledge of the way they can uh, collect money and keep records and uh, follow up on properties. I wasn't aware of the, the number of ways that you can uh, own property and how it can be inherited and, and deeded and so forth. And I'd really like to uh, see the schools teach this, to know when you become an adult, you know, how to get what you should get. Well, then why don't you go to the school board and, and bang your fist on the table and say, why aren't you teaching the kids something practical? I mean, yeah. it's your, you know, it's your school system. You have a, just as much right as anybody else in the town to suggest what they teach. And if you suggest it, you know, they may refuse it, but... You have to give it a try. You have to go in there and say, you, you should be doing this. You're paying the taxes in that community to help the school board keep going. Should be the least they could do is listen to you. Okay. Yes, Frank? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, um, I was just wondering, um, 
who is your rock and roll idol? I mean, you know, just about everybody has an idol. Uh, I don't have a rock and roll idol, but I used to have a rhythm and blues idol, or a few of them. I used to really like the Howlin' Wolf, and I like Muddy Waters, and uh, I like Johnny Guitar Watson, mm -hmm. guys like that. And um, you were talking about Van Halen earlier? Yeah. I mean, are y'all close with him, or, you know, you just... Well, I'm, I'm not very close with him. I'm uh, hung out with him a little bit. Dweezil is uh, his friend. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, y'all were talking about Falwell, you know? I mean, I always wonder what they do in their spare time. You know, they sit in the living room and eat dinner and play records backwards all night or something. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I mean, you can play a million yeah, that records. Would make a real nice situation comedy. An evening at home with Pastor Jerry and uh, Jerry Fowler. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I wonder how they got started playing the records backwards in the first place. You know, probably either. because they were too ignorant to play them forwards. I, 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 it's amazing. In fact, it, one of, uh, I'm not trying to, you know, we're all talking against Pastor Gary here, but one of the things that he didn't realize, I had to set him straight on, and he, he, he apologized later, but he accused a lot of bands who are putting out promo discs at 45 RPMs, which you do, and he says the reason they're putting them out at 45 RPM is so people will play them at 33 because that's what they're used to, but because they're not going to know to change the speed, and they'll play it at 33, and when they hear it at 33, that's when those demon suggestions come through, and that's when uh, the, the the suggestion of sex abuse and, and drug use and all those things come out when you play the record at the wrong speed. So he got on this big thing about the fact that artists are putting out albums or records the size of an album but pl recording at 45 and I said no they're doing that for quality purposes they're doing that for better fidelity and he, you know he, he, he reluctantly said well that's possible Alan. I'm glad you mentioned that but uh, that's one of the things you do on your, your stuff which it makes the quality I saw that particular Pastor Gary show where he, he came to that erroneous conclusion and I'll tell you what, what the deal was he had a record that they play on KROQ called Johnny Are You Queer? Do you know that song? <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that show too. That's all I know of the song is what I saw on his show. Okay, right. So he plays Johnny Are You Queer at 33 and then has the gall to suggest that a, an ignorant person playing this 45 RPM record at 33 will hear what appears to be a man's voice. Johnny, are you queer? And that would mean that the devil was suggesting that Johnny should become queer. You know, I mean, that's taking logic and, and distressing it quite a bit. I mean, that, that's the kind of things that we're dealing with here. I saw I saw a show that you were talking about earlier with Jim and Tammy and the PTL Club or something like that. Oh, and yeah, they, yeah. And they were talking about um, aborted babies or something. Yeah. I forget what it's about. Tammy looks like a punk rocker herself. Like one? A punk rocker. She is one, or she looks like one. She looks like one. Well, maybe she will. Maybe she'll become one. <laughs> well, um, Frank, you to, I guess you already have touched on this with your writing, but that would be something you should, you know, do, do a song on. As a matter of fact, if you have the You Are What You Is album there, there are three songs on it that deal directly with this uh, set of topics, and I would be uh, very pleased if you would play them after I get off the phone. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got the record, sure. Uh, because the songs are Dumb All Over, Heavenly Bank Account, and, um, let's see, uh, The Meek Shall Inherit Nothing. All three of those songs deal with television evangelism in one way or another. And that's what you should be playing on a radio station in North Carolina. <laughs> we played Dumb All Over the last time you were here, so we'll, this time we'll get, uh, uh, we'll talk about, we'll play those other two songs. And that's one of my favorite recent releases from you, Frank. A lot of people uh, feel like, you know, that, that's their favorite in recent times since Shake Your Booty. And I, how were the sales on You Are What You Is? Was it more than the others? Uh, no, it didn't do any good. It didn't? Oh, that's sad. That's sad. So much good material. With the greatest contribution you've ever made, what you think it was, into the, the world of rock and roll? Oh, I don't think I've really contributed that much to the world of rock and roll. The only thing I've really got to offer is uh, common sense. As far as the rock and roll goes, I mean, you can get that from George Thorogood and the rest of the guys. You know, what I do is only marginally connected with rock and roll. I just uh, wanted to uh, ask him... Uh, one of my favorite albums by him is We're Only In It For The Money. And uh, I was just kind of curious where he got inspiration or where he got his ideas for the music and lyrics. Uh, I don't know if he was really inspired or if it just 
popped out of his mind, or I was just curious about it. I've been wondering, wondering about it for a long time. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't know what you mean by the word inspired, but uh, it just seemed like the thing to do at that period of time. 1967, everybody was a hippie, and they were all going around pretending like they loved everybody else, and they had flowers all over the place, and I just thought they were stupid. And somebody had to say something negative about it because everybody else was swallowing the whole enchilada. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I was curious about, if it was more or less just a parody of the times, you know, what was going on happening at that time. Yeah, it was, I think it was a pretty fair commentary on the fact that uh, there was a kind of behavior going on that sense to me. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I really, I really like that. And I was wondering also, are they going to uh, re-release uh, Lumpy Gravy and uh, some of your other earlier albums? Yeah, those are all coming out again around Christmas time. Oh, that'd be great, because those are a few albums that I've been trying to get for years, and I really like to get my hands on them. I was wondering, too, whatever happened to Ian Underwood? I haven't heard from anything about him in a long time. Ian works in the studios. He's a synthesizer programmer. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm just wondering, we talked to all these lovely children in Mr. Zappa, and I'm just wondering what, what Mrs. Zappa is doing and how she feels about all this. Well, I think she's in the other room getting some iced tea. Oh, well... Want well, me to go get her? Huh? Would you like to talk to her? Yeah, I'd love to. She uh, talked to me. Oh, no, hold on. Hey, Gail. Okay, this should be here in just a second. Uh -huh. Hi, Gail. Uh -huh. This is Alan Handelman. You're on the air, and we have a caller here who uh, wants to talk to you. Hi, Gail. My name is Pam. Hi, Pam. I'm living in North Carolina, and I've always wondered about you. <laughs> always. <laughs> How do you, I mean, uh, what's it like having, having a big celebrity family and all that? Crazed. Huh? Crazed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, it means a lot of driving. Huh? It means a lot of driving, a lot of carpool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. It's four kids. I've only got one, and that's a lot of trouble, really. <laughs> Yeah, you'll see. The older they get, the more carpools they have. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions for Gail? Well, I just wonder, you know, um, you stay so much behind the picture, you know. I mean, you never, you always see pictures of Frank and Moon and, and the others, but you never see any pictures of you. I know. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your questions, Gail. <laughs> thank you for talking to nice me. I really you. appreciate that. Okay, Gail, thank you for talking with us. I'm sure. And Pam, thank you very much for your call. Thank you. Bye. And let's Bye. see. Uh, Gail, are you still there? Yeah. Okay, Gail. Well, before Frank comes back, let me ask you a couple of questions. During the, um, there must be times when Frank is on the road when he was touring that it would get pretty irritating, the fact that you're, you know, home alone with the kids and Frank's, did, did it ever get to be a problem? Being home alone with the kids? Oh, yeah, when Frank was on the road, did it ever get to be, on, get on your nerves a little bit? Uh, no, not really. I'm a professional wife. I think there should be more professional wives out there. And I'm also a professional mom, and it's a hard job. It's not the easiest job in the world to be a mom, and, and there's a lot of people out there that are just moms and don't have to worry about their husbands being on the road. So I think that, you know, everybody has uh, their own special problems dealing with being a mom and a wife. It's the same just as everyone else. Well, has there ever been a time when you were, let's say, in the supermarket, Gail, and you're just talking to some people, and they find out that you're Frank Zappa's wife, and they look at you and say, wow, is, how, I mean, did they ever look at you in such a way that they were puzzled that you could live with a man like Frank Zappa because of his image is so crazy? The in public illusion of Frank Zappa, especially a few years ago, was pretty wild. I don't think I have it as bad as Frank. When he goes in the supermarket, people do things like get on the little squat box, you know, for the hour open on grocery and sing things like Bobby Brown. <laughs> that doesn't happen to me. That happens to Frank, though. How often does Frank go to the supermarket? Well, surprisingly, probably about two times a year. To buy coffee and cigarettes, right? <laughs>
<laughs> like that, yeah. All right, Gail, it's been great talking to you. Why don't we get Frank back on here, squeeze on a few more calls, and we're going to call it a night. Okay. Okay, I'm back. All right, Frank, let's go back to the phone here. And you still drinking a lot of coffee? Yeah, I just got one just now. By the way, Dweezil's back if you want to talk to him. Oh, yes, I sure would. I sure would. Uh, hold on, I'll go get him. Come okay, on. that sounds great. Dweezil. Yeah. My name is Alan Handelman. It's great to talk to you. Nice talk to you. We're on the air here, live on WQDR, and uh, we played both your songs tonight, and you are an amazing guitarist. Did your dad tell you who spoke with him earlier tonight and talked about you? Yep. Did he tell you about George Thorogood? Yep. You saying nope or yep? I said yeah. Oh, good. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, you, uh, you're, you're quite impressive, and I uh, had the pleasure of uh, seeing Eddie Van Halen a couple of times, and I know he talks very highly of you. Of course, you're, you're good buddies. We understand that now, and uh, you've got an amazing future. Man, by the time you're 17 years old, look at it. Thanks. Very impressive. What are, what's some of the new stuff you're into right now? I uh, mean music? Yeah, music. As far as the the harder rock. Um, I'm not listening to it too much. I just, I still listen to uh, the Van Halen stuff. And then <laughs> I listen to, um, I don't know, listen to, yeah, I still listen to Randy Rose. And I, uh, that's, about, that's about it. I, you know, I listen <laughs> to uh, just those two guitar players right now. <laughs> Well, you sure picked out some good ones. Uh, everyone talks highly of those two. Now, let's talk a little bit about your childhood. And these might sound like silly questions, and I know you probably get these questions. You say, geez, another time i got to answer this. But, Dweezil, uh, you know, when you were younger, uh, with the name Dweezil, did, there, did you have any problems with that? Did your friends make fun of you earlier in life when you were, like, in first, second, and third grade? Uh, not the name so much. They always made fun of long hair. Ah, but now I have short hair, so, you know, they can't complain. But the name was never a problem. No, not really. You know, lots, you know, most of my, you know, all my friends like my name because, uh, uh it's, they say it's different, you know, but, you know, it, it's different, but, you know, I like it because, you know, it's, it's original and... It is a neat name. I think Dweez, what do they call you for short? Dweez? What? Do they call you Dweez for short? Oh, uh, no, they usually just call me Dweezel. Okay, well, I like that name. Now, Dweezel, what, what, do you watch much television? I watch uh, pretty much, yeah. Do you ever watch uh, the Three Stooges? Are they popular down there? Uh, I've seen them, yeah. They're on, like, every Sunday. Yeah, so you do catch them. You know, there's a big revival in the country now of interest with the Three Stooges, especially with Curly. And they just got their star in Hollywood, finally, after all these years. But... Uh, but I just want to see what you know if you if you are into uh, you know what what you're into. Get an idea besides rock and roll, living. Now, what did you do to what did you do today? What's a typical day, a Sunday family day at the at the Zappa household? Uh, it wasn't a typical day. It was uh, out, there was a bunch of people over. I had a couple of friends over, and we went and saw Jaws 3D. Oh, how was it? <laughs> no comment. All right, all right, all right, no comment. I haven't seen it yet, but was it really good 3D? Did it really come out of the screen? Well, um, to tell you the truth, you can't really tell it's 3D or, or not. You know, there's a couple good effects, but, I mean, basically, the, you know, the movie just had nothing to it. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It was not really a story. What did you think of Return of the Jedi? I thought it was okay, but, you know... Uh, I like Star Wars better. Yeah, yeah. Hi, right, Dweezil. It's good to talk to you. Next time I have uh, Frank on, probably will be around uh, Christmas time when he releases all that other stuff. There are lots of people listening who would just love the opportunity to talk to you. They, there's more people out there who are aware of you than you probably realize. And uh, it'd be good to have you taking phone calls. Would you like to do that? All right. Beat it, you know, I'm just wondering what is really the best route as far as being a more being to a more versatile musician as far as trying to feel it or learning more on theory or looking for an energy to draw off a, you know such as a crowd or something well i would say all of those all of those things. all of those yeah but just let me remind you of something if you're playing for gi's there you that's you're the majority of our crowd them that they really need you know because i I'm just thinking about my experiences when I go to Europe and play in Germany, and there's a lot of GIs come there. Mm -hmm. And they're so, 
they're so happy just to have something American going on when you're playing over there. So it's, it makes you feel good to play for them. I don't know what it's like playing the gigs that you're doing, but uh, I've always enjoyed playing for military audiences. Well, yeah, right now, you know, we, as far as you know, the local clubs around here that we do, the demand is basically, basically, you know, for a country and western to a southern rock to a, maybe a little jazz. You know, but that, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to further myself, and then, you know, I'd like to know which direction to go, you know. Well, if you want to play anything other than those types of music, then you're definitely in the wrong location.